This is the government's search and rescue unit in action, and an example of one of the dramatic functions of your Federal Communications Commission. Fortunately, he has a radio transmitter. The law requires it. And he's sending a steady stream of messages to the Coast Guard asking his position. The Coast Guard, in turn, calls a radio field station in Powder Springs, Georgia, which gets in immediate touch with another field station, and both of them tune in on the wavelength of the boat. Swiftly, they make their separate readings of the boat's position and teletype their results to this plotting center in a building on Lafayette Square across from the White House in Washington, D.C. Here, by a process called triangulation, technicians using data from the two field stations determine the exact location of the boat and send word by teletype to the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard is then able to radio the skipper his precise latitude and longitude, and if necessary, rush to his aid. My name is Newton N. Minow. I'm the chairman of that commission, commonly known by its initials, the FCC. Ours is an independent federal regulatory agency. Like members of the cabinet, we are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. However, unlike cabinet members, we serve definite terms of seven years. We are a bipartisan agency. We have four members of one party and three of another. And our authority and functions stem from the provisions of the Communications Act of 1934 and its amendments. In that act, Congress decided that all station operators be licensed and identified. Their frequencies, their licenses, their renewals of license all must be determined under a standard which has become a familiar phrase, the public interest, convenience, and necessity. A glance at this chart shows the several divisions of the Federal Communications Commission. There are seven commissioners and a working staff in four operating bureaus, Safety and Special Radio Services, the Common Carrier Bureau, the Broadcast Bureau, and the Field Engineering and Monitoring Bureau. The station licensee is the temporary trustee of a piece of public property, the airwaves. Furthermore, this natural resource is limited. This is a drawing of what the engineers call the usable electromagnetic spectrum. As we learn more about it, we can expand our usable portion of the spectrum. But for many years now, the demand by users has far exceeded the amount of usable spectrum space that is available. On this spectrum, we must find room for over two million transmitters, which we have placed at the disposal of nearly three million authorized operators. It involves keeping order. It also means deciding who is entitled to the preferred positions on this high road of communication. The government uses a considerable portion of this spectrum space for military and other government uses, and we cooperate fully in this. The commission must decide what other non-government users belong on the spectrum. Of course, public safety, as in the case of our small boat in distress, belongs. So ships on the ocean and planes in the air must be licensed to have radio. These are the services administered by the Safety and Special Services Bureau. The same bureau also issues licenses to certain kinds of moving vehicles on land. Police cars. Fire 
fire department. The ambulances on our highways, civil defense, special disaster units. Many businesses and industries also use radio. Railroads in their switching yards. Even doctors may keep in touch with their offices or be paged over miniature pocket-sized receivers. Then there's that large and earnest army of hands, the amateur operators who have many times proven in moments of emergency that they can be of real public service. And finally, there are those who use radio waves for purposes other than communication. The doctor with a diathermy machine, even the man who has a radio gadget to start or stop his model railroad. But this span of wavelengths is still too limited to tolerate anyone who decides to help himself to a spot without permission, which suggests another of our jobs, keeping watch over engineering standards and monitoring our own licensees. This is an FCC mobile unit operated by our Field Engineering and Monitoring Bureau. It's spending the afternoon at the races, but it isn't here to follow the horses. Its mission here is to locate the perpetrators of a crime transmitting without a license. Somewhere in this crowd, someone is sending radio messages with a miniature transmitter in an attempt to beat the bookies. The is a rotating directional antenna, and inside is a control panel. From this mobile unit, the FCC Engineering and Monitoring Bureau may be able to single out from all this milling crowd the man who is breaking the law. Calling base, unit F3 calling base, taking a bearing, taking a bearing. The bearing reads 270 from my position. What's your position? Unit F3 over to base, unit F3 over to base. Such units also track down such unlicensed stations as the secret transmitter in the German embassy in the days before Pearl Harbor. The enterprising but misguided high school boy who builds his own unlicensed transmitter in the family garage. People such as the high school boy are not only trespassers and nuisances, but they may even be dangerous by interfering with license stations in the field of public safety. To the Common Carrier Bureau falls our regulation of interstate and international telephone and telegraph service. In today's world, such communication must be swift and efficient. Often it functions best without competition, in other words, as a monopoly. So the FCC has the power to assure adequate telephone, telegraph, and cable service, and to see that rates for such service are reasonable. And now we come to those important media which so pervade our lives, 3,700 AM and FM radio and 665 television broadcasting stations. This is the province of the Broadcast Bureau. There are more radio and TV receivers in the United States than people. This power of instantaneous sight and sound is without precedent in the history of communications. Even now, we're stepping off into space to speed our links with the entire world. These new demands create a steady challenge for the Commission and its staff, and we intend to meet those challenges with the same standard we require of FCC licensees. And that means service in the public interest. <laughs>